Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman, and we're here with Clayton Eliason. Yes, sir. Good and, to be here. And uh, he uh, is uh, Red's Guide Service. Yep. <clears throat> and we actually have him here because people are starting to get all freaked out about walleye fishing. And, and uh, my knowledge of walleye fishing is more like uh, throwing crankbaits, pico crankbaits. And so it's more limited or dragging some some worms worms yep. around but we happen to have an expert here so i do it a lot uh, tell us a little bit about um about your fishing knowledge where does it all come from did you i we had talked earlier you'd worked in a, in a tackle store here in northwest arkansas yeah. um so my parents didn't fish or anything like that i'm trying to totally self-taught um hung out in the tackle shop a bunch but none of those guys would ever take me fishing because I don't know, I just talked too much and was probably annoying for him. But uh, uh, so I just, you know, trial by error. Um, I right. fish 250 days a year or so. Um, so I'm on the water all the time. Uh, for walleye season from about three weeks ago through uh, middle of May, I'll be on the water pretty much every day. Um, so I stay on them all the time and, and uh, make sure we're on them. That, that's about the easiest way to right. stay with them and make sure that you know where they're at kind of back up a little bit here so you guide for different species of fish besides walleye you tell us uh the different species that you fish for and where you fish for them at okay so springtime we're doing uh walleye on table rock um Uh summertime we'll do smallmouth um and we do all the rivers around here we'll do the kings river the illinois river the elk river um some unnamed rivers that i tell people once they hire me but not before then because they're just they're small Uh, a lot of times it's private access um, smaller rivers uh, a lot more fragile ecosystems so you got to take care of those Uh Um, so we'll do that out of the river at which is the uh, inflatable drift boat Um, so we do a lot of that with fly rods and traditional gear Uh, and then fall time it is a mix of everything i do a lot of tournament bass fishing Uh, i'm still doing a lot of uh, smallmouth on the rivers um your walleye will move back up uh, normally around the full moon of October. Uh, it's The water temperature is normally the right temperature, so they think they're going to spawn again. They're not actually spawning. Right. But it puts them in those same spots that, you know, they were in April or May. Gets them um, in the mood. Yeah, like it does. a teenager. It, yeah, it, that's exactly what it is. And it's normally those, you know, three, four-year-old walleye. They're oh. uh, 19 to 22 inches, which is perfect for, you know, they have to be 18 inches to keep. Right. So catching those 19 to 21, 22 inches is perfect. Wow. Uh, so you get about two and a half, three weeks there where uh-huh. you get another little walleye run, and it's a nice break from throwing a fly rod. Your shoulder gets a break. So there you go. That's that's kind of what I do, though. Wintertime, I do a lot of tournament stuff. Um, do a few striper trips with fly rods. Uh-huh. Uh, if the water and weather's right, if it's not, I don't worry about it. Right. Um, so this year we had our first kid, so I've spent a bunch of time off the water hanging out, being a dad. How old is uh how old's your young young one? Uh so we just had our first kid. He's four uh, months old as of yesterday. So, boy or girl? Little boy, Cooper. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cooper. Yep, Cooper Ryan. So oh. your life a, is about ready to change. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Was it a keeper? How much did he weigh? Uh was he over seven? No. No. He was uh actually now I'm gonna second guess myself i really don't. he was six six and change we had an emergency c-section so oh. the, it was like two o'clock in the morning they woke me up as we were rushing to the or so a little foggy there um i got you. but we got a lot of pictures so uh, i can go back and look at those pictures i have to laugh steve wright who writes for uh bass times bass Messenger okay. magazine yep. bass times he actually was the reporter for uh, northwest arkansas times when i was uh full-time guiding and and uh, my youngest no actually my oldest daughter was born and they put that in the uh, report that i really? caught a keeper that was uh, <laughs> seven something pounds and nice so her name was uh, her first time she was in the paper was that but nice That's we'll get awesome. back to that uh, we'll get back to so you talked about uh, fishing the, the streams and the rivers mm-hmm. and fly fishing. So break it down. Uh, you're also fishing for trout, right? We do some trout fishing, uh-huh. yeah. Um, if I have time. I'm so busy uh, right. with the smallmouth stuff. Uh-huh. Um, I've, I've got a couple of different guides that work for me. Right. Um, and so they do get a lot of those trips. 
if you specially request that I guide it, then I will. Right. Um, I do a lot over on Norfolk and um, the white below Bull Shoals. Uh-huh. Uh, Beaver's fun. We do a lot of two-hour. I ha- In the summertime, I have what we call an after-work special. Right. It's a two-hour trip. We go down below the dam. It's perfect for uh, entry-level fly fishermen. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, they kind of know how to cast, but they need to polish it off, uh, and they really kind of want to learn more, like, spots on the river, how to, you know, what flies to use, stuff like that. I got you. Um, so we do a lot of that in the, the, the summertime. But I'll do a, a smallmouth trip during the day, go home, put up the drift boat, uh, grab my four-weight fly rods, put up my situates, and then go do a trout trip in the evening. All right, so. Let's talk about that drift boat because it's yeah. a it's an inflatable. What uh, yep. brand is it? How big is it? Does it have an engine? Uh, so it's it's Charles River Rat USA. Okay. Um, the frames are actually made in the U.S. Uh, in Utah. Uh, it's twelve feet and change, just just over twelve feet. Um, the so it, I'm going to kind of geek out for a minute on it, but it's some cool stuff to know about it. Cool. Uh, so. Most of those inflatable drift boats uh, have one or two chambers. This actually has four chambers. So the main uh, the main body of it is four separate chambers. So the cool thing about that is, one, it, it floats higher in the water. Uh-huh. Uh, two, if you pop one of those, you just turn your frame around and just float home with a dead chamber. You don't have to patch it on the river, and it does not affect the floatability of it. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it's super versatile, a lot safer. It's got a... Uh, inflatable floor that slides in uh, but it also has that false bottom on it uh-huh. uh, so it's really normal for me to have two fly fishermen standing up casting in it uh, but I can put right. that thing two inches of water and we're floating through not touching the bottom right so, so you're you're rowing it yes sir, rowing it right? from the middle uh, uh-huh. and then one guy standing in the front one guy standing in the back I've been in those boats before awesome they're they great to fish, especially if you're in the front and the fish are biting. Mm-hmm. Well, nice thing about a small drift boat like that, yes. if I get the guy in the front and he's catching all the fish, it's real easy for me to kind of do a half stroke and, right. and send him off and get that bat guy a few fish. I've, I've been known to do that a few times, especially if the uh, if the guy in the back is tipping. Right. I'll, I'll tend to do that little half stroke. And... Do you, uh, when, you're, when you're out in the water, um, and you have, you know, you have your clients that are out there. Mm-hmm. When you meet them, it's it's already inflated. Yes, sir. So you're ready to go. It's on a trailer. Yep, yep. So uh, I've got a utility trailer that I haul it on. Uh-huh. Uh, every great once in a while, like if I'm doing a really long run, I will deflate it. I yeah. can, I can take it apart, uh, frame, deflate the boat, and everything um, in about ten minutes. I can assemble it, have it inflated, right. ready to roll in about ten minutes. So if I'm doing a long run and I don't feel like hauling the trailer. Uh, or if I'm doing, there's a few rivers that I'll do that you kind of got to take some nasty dirt roads to get down to yep. where we're launching. So I'll I'll ditch the trailer and uh, just throw it in the bed of the truck and inflate it when we get there. And uh, so do you use that to walleye fish out of then? No, sir. I've got a 2007 no. champion that I walleye fish out of. All right. Well, let's talk about walleye fishing. Let's do it. We're almost to the peak, or we are at the peak of walleye fishing. And Well, we're, we're pre-season yet. Pre-season? Uh, yep. So this, this will air like three, four weeks. Okay. Three yeah. Weeks three, three now. weeks from now. Yeah. We're, we're going to be, yeah. Right at the beginning of, um, peach season. So normally right. I say peach season is from the last week of February, um, through like middle of March or so. Uh-huh. Um, and that's the spawning. That's the reason why it's peak time. Yes, sir. So, uh, well that's pre-spawn. Um, uh-huh. so that's kind of the end of pre-spawn. I got gotcha. uh, And then when they spawn, there's a week there where it kind of slows down. Luckily, they spawn in waves. So they're going to come right. up out of the lake in, in waves. So uh, yeah. all of them that have pulled way up that are truly focused on spawning, we'll kind of leave those alone and, and run down and look for some other fish. Um, so there's about a six-week period where it's it's pretty well lights out. Right. Um, and you can catch them really any way you want. You can do you know traditional walleye stuff like a, a jig and a minnow. Uh, right. And I use a lot of the 8-ounce Pico jig heads uh, right. tipped to the middle. Um, do jig and crawler. Uh, do a half of a night crawler. Uh-huh. Um, do a lot of Lindy rigs, which uh, for bass guys, it's a Carolina rig uh, with an inline float. So it keeps everything up off the bottom. Um, right. Do that with a minnow or a uh, night crawler. 
Uh, we don't use leeches down here. Right. I did. I did ask that every year. Where's the leeches at? Well, we're in the Ozarks. We don't really have that many leeches, so we don't we don't use those <laughs> as bait. The bait shops are right. not selling leeches. Yeah, no. Um, so we'll do a lot of that. Um, pulling Lindy Ridge, we're casting them and dragging them. Right. Um, so we don't do a whole lot of trolling. You said you're not a big troller. I so, don't which like is trolling. Part of the part of the draw for you and part of. Uh, when I was thinking about having a guest on was you were kind of unique because you're not, you're not actually trolling. You're actually keeping the angler busy. Right. And they're catching their own fish. Yes, sir. Correct. The only time we ever troll, there's two circumstances that will happen every year that will, will troll the whole time. And it's when the husband calls me and says, Hey, my wife said she'd come, but she's going to read a book and grilling a fish. All right, we're trolling, right? right? The other one is when there's a young kid in the boat. Uh, I always keep my iPad in the boat. This is where young guides kind of have it over the old dudes. Uh, I keep a 12-inch iPad in the boat, and I'll right. hook up Netflix. And we'll have right. a 10-year-old kid. You know, they'll fish for 20 minutes, and then they're bored. So we put on their favorite show, and they'll watch uh, Netflix in the boat while Dad fishes. And uh, we'll troll, and he'll get to grilling some fish, but. Other than those two circumstances, I, I right. try my hardest not to troll at all. Right. And so what do you think is probably in this period of time, mm-hmm. the most popular way of catch them for you? I should say, what's the most um, productive way for you to catch them yep. right now? I can tell you, uh, this is our story uh, and I'm sticking to it. Mitch and I went up there uh, below the dam and we were fishing I think it was one of the first times we got in and the order and uh, it was uh, uh, the crawdad pattern Pico crankbait. We went up there and we, uh, of course, I was trying to bass fish yeah, because uh, we were down farther and I didn't think the walleyes were going to be sitting next to trees. They were all sitting next to trees mm-hmm. just like behind the current. And yep. once we got on that, they were chewing and we were catching. Yes. And it was pretty phenomenal. So every year about... Wow, this time we run up there and we use that crawdad pattern. And so, yeah, what, so are you, what are you using? What's the most productive way? Um, it, truly most productive is probably a jig and a minnow. The most common right. way that I do it though, the way yeah. that I enjoy to do it, um, uh, jerk baits and swim baits. Um, right. and now just to clarify in the age that we live in, when I'm talking swim baits, I'm talking a three inch tri tech, not, these massive swim baits that y- right. you can use those. And I like, if I go out on my own, I will, I'll throw a seven inch swim bait and it's super fun. Right. Um, but as far as guiding goes, three inch tri tech, um, you know, 2.8 to 3.3 is what we're using. Um, and what head? I actually use yeah. the, uh, bite me bait or the, what is it? Bid bite company. Big bite. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, they've got a extra long shank, Jama Jatsu hook. Okay. Uh, and I, Stinking love it. Quarter ounce is kind of my go-to. I keep some right. three eighths in the boat, depending on what current. part of the lake we're uh-huh. yeah current what part of the lake we're on. Um, quarter ounce sw- uh, three inch swim baits, kind of the go-to, uh, just because it's super versatile. Um, right. So you can cast it, retrieve it. You can jig it off the bottom. Um, you can drag it on the bottom. Most people don't realize that, but you know, I mean, if it's a slow bite, if the water's temp still kind of cold, throw it out there and just drag it along the bottom like a Texas red worm. You're gonna snag up a bunch. Uh, uh-huh. but you'll be dragging it along. You're like, Oh, I got a leaf. No, you don't. You better rear back and punch him in the face. Cause you got a walleye right. on. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that. So that's, that's a pretty common technique. Put it on a spinning rod. You can throw it a mile. Um, and what are you using for uh, line? And yeah. So and my setup, rod and reel? uh, six, 10 medium light, uh, TFO rods, spinning uh-huh. rods. Um, Sunline SX1 10 pound braid. Okay. To, uh, depending on, uh, I'll run anywhere from a six pound liter to a 12 pound liter, depending on what we're doing. Um, Sunline fluorocarbon. Uh, and you're using the braid so you can get the distance in your distance. Cast. Uh, you get about 15% more casting distance at a braid. And then the right. sensitivity, um, they say it's like 20% more sensitive. And it definitely is. I mean, you get a lot, you can feel a lot more of those bites. Uh huh. Um, and I will also say with, you know, if we downsize uh, a lot of times we'll cast ice jigs, uh, you know, if they're not really super active and you kind of got to get it in their face, uh, a little number five ice jig, 
Really? Uh, oh yeah, it's nice Yeah, and uh-huh. you're casting them. Uh, right. And then it's you're just different. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't hardly ever vertical fish, so you'll cast it out, let it sink all the way to the bottom, and then it's a technique called snap jigging. Most people don't know what that is, and they just want to jig it, right? Right. But to snap jig, you're actually dropping your rod tip, and then you're kind of flexing your hand, and so when you flex your hand, it, it snaps that rod tip back up. And so you're really only moving that bait about four inches. Right. But it's so fast and aggressive. It, I tell clients all the time, uh, basically what we're doing is if if you stand there and you don't really care and some drunk dude walks up to you and goes to throw a jab at you, you're going to respond to it because it's just natural, right? You right. see something flying at your face at 90 miles an hour, you're going to react. So you're kind of doing that with, when you're snap jetting. You're getting it in their face and you're just forcing them uh, to react to it. Right. Uh, so we'll do a lot of that. And that braid, you've got to have the, uh, when you set that, that hook, when you drive right. it home, that non-stretch for the braid is what really allows you to do that. All right. So so now we're going to shift gears because okay. now you've told them how to catch uh, catch those walleyes. You can always go with them, too. And uh, That's only one learn. of the ways, right? There's a, there's uh, so many ways to catch them, but that's that's uh, kind of the go-tos. And uh, so smallmouth, you're mm-hmm. fishing those more in the uh, summertime and in the fall. Yes, uh, sir. Some in the spring. Yeah, kind uh, of. What from, are you using? What are you using? Still using the the float. Yeah, you the know, drift you're, boat. Your you're yep. drift boat. Yep. And you're going down. So what what are they usually fishing with? What are you recommending that they fish with? And what should they bring? So that's kind of a tough one. Um, I cater to what the client wants. So I have right. a lot of people that want to fly fish. Oh, um, right. So I would say probably seventy five percent of my summer trips are fly fishing. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So we do a ton of it. Um, and so I, I supply everything. Uh, the only thing clients have to bring is uh, I if they want something to drink other than water, they got to right. bring that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Well, uh, let's talk about some flies. So the sure. patterns that you're using, catch those smallmouth, mm-hmm. crawdad patterns, what's, what's the most popular one? So I've kind of got a one-two punch. We're going to have a right. crawdad pattern on, and then we're going to have a streamer on. Okay. Um, they're again depending on what river we're on and what the client's goal is. So if they're coming out chasing big ones, uh, right. and that's kind of cool in the Ozarks because uh, a twenty inch. So any in the Ozarks, any smallmouth over sixteen inches is what we consider a trophy in the rivers. Right. Uh, a sixteen inch smallmouth in the river is going to be about fourteen years old. Yep. So super slow growing. Uh, so if they're wanting to target those, we're going to use big streamers, double deceivers. Um, a lot of flies have names I probably shouldn't say on a podcast. They're they're really perverted because they're a bunch of old guys that sit up in Montana and tie. They drink whiskey and tie flies all winter. So right, uh, and they think it's fun. They, they think it's hilarious. They're probably still giggling. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, but big streamers, right? So right. Uh, a small streamer for us is going to be like five inches. So we're throwing a lot of five to seven, eight inch streamers. Wow. Uh, yeah. So big streamers. It is. Um, if you want to catch numbers, we're going to downsize your streamer to like two to three inches right. uh, and have a crawdad pattern. Uh, okay. And that's going to be what we use for the numbers. So floating line? Um, um, no, sir. Sinking, um, pretty like much. Intermediate? Yeah, we're going to use a... Um, they, they've kind of changed names on us. Uh, oh. In the last couple of years, they've come out with some cool... Um, I guess they still fall under intermediate typically uh-huh. your intermediate lines are are, are hover lines uh right. they get to a certain depth and they stop right? right the last few years they've come out with uh, a combo sink line and so the one that i use the most it's a type three to a type one to a floating so what right. that means is it's three inches per second one inch per second floating uh-huh. so if i need to get way down i just count it down further right so it, right. it never goes buoyant like a hover line does uh, but it's not a true sinking line either, so right. I I don't know where those fall into, but that's probably the number one line that I use. Um, Rio makes the great fly line. Uh, Outbound uh-huh. short is kind of my go-to. You can find it in any fly shop anywhere across the country, right. uh, and it, it's a fairly cheap line. It'll work great for you. It's kind of a one-season line. Change them out every year. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. It, if you really take care of them, you might get a couple of years out of them. Right. Um, right. But kind of gone are the days of lines lasting you five, seven, ten years. Right. So, huh. but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, 
top waters? We use Do a few they, poppers, yeah. A few poppers. Uh, Who Who's making these? Are you making them yourself? Because a lot of fly fishermen make their own flies. Yeah, so I tie a lot of my own. Um, and then Ryan Walker, a really good buddy of mine, he started Ozark Smallmouth Alliance. Uh, uh-huh. It's a big conservation group. A uh, right. really good buddy of mine. He also owns Ozark, uh, let's see, Ozark Smallmouth Fly Co. And so he ties a lot of my flies for me. Um, he and his better half are much faster at it than I am. Oh. Um, right. so that whenever I need a bid order, he helps me out. And do they live around here? Where, uh, they live just, just they north of us. Yeah. They're in Missouri. Uh huh. Yep. They're uh, about an hour, uh, into Missouri. Right. So, but yeah. they come down here all the time. I go up there all the time. There's because really yeah. between the two of us, there's, there's so many rivers that we fish that are, you know, right on the edge of the state line. Right. Um, so a lot of that overlaps. I got gotcha. you. So, all right, well, that takes us to uh, Tackle Time. Tackle Time, of course, is sponsored by someone we've already mentioned. And uh, the first one is uh, Pico Lures. And uh, Pico Lures, they have a full line of uh, consumer products, everything from soft plastics to uh, hard baits. And I actually brought some of these. These are the, uh, because crappie fishing's hot. I'm, sure. I'm, and will be, you know, even, you could probably catch walleyes on these too, but. The, the small... The uh, monkey milk color? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so all those uh, you can find at actually a lot of the local tackle stores in your area. If they don't carry them, have them call up Mitch at Pico Lures, and uh, they'll set it up so they do catch them. Otherwise, you can check them out at picolures.com. The other sponsor is Smith Consumer Products, and I brought in this hook sharpener because you can never have too many hook shops. That is the truth. And so uh, they make all kinds of uh, hook sharpening products, and they also have knives, and boy, they just got everything. You just imagine uh, that an accessory you need, they make it. Perfect. So anyway, you can check out uh, Smith Consumer Products at smithproducts.com. And if they wanted to find out, Clayton, more about, uh, you know, your guide service and what you do and, and what you're fishing for, how would they get in touch with you? Uh, Facebook or Instagram, either one, okay. it just Red's Guide Service. Um, right. I think Instagram has some understores in there, but I'm sure if you just look Put up Red's, Red's Guide Service, it, it should pull me up. Uh, and then phone number, uh, it's plastered everywhere, but it's 479-366-1402. Um, call me, text me, and uh, we'll go fishing. Uh, one last question. Sure. I guess it just came up. Uh, is Red's Guide Service, and how did you get that name? So so my last name is Eliason. Right. Uh, in the Army, in basic training, none of the drill sergeants could ever pronounce my last name, and they would get so ticked off right? because uh, they're trying to yell at me. And they get so ticked off, and I got red hair. I got a hat on, which you just can't see it, but I got red hair. And uh, especially whenever they shave your head and base it, man, it just right. super red. And finally, one of them just looks over at me and, Red, hey, you, Red. And I spun around, I was like, what? And it stuck. Gotcha. And so, um, you yeah, know, I came home from base at an AIT and, and uh, jumping around all over with the military for a while. And, uh, Came home and was talking to my dad one day in the truck, and I was, man, I, I gotta rename my guide service because since I was sixteen, it was like Eliason's Guide Service or something. Or Does it roll off your tongue? Yeah, it's super lame. And so I was like, I need something better. And dad was like, Well, everybody calls you Red. Why don't you just go by that? Yeah, that's genius. <laughs> so here I am, Red's Guide Service. There you go. Now you know. And now uh, we know the reason why. But uh, we appreciate you being on the show. Like I said, make sure you check them out uh, and. Uh, Walleye fishing is just about ready to get uh, off the hook. Yes, sir. Which Absolutely. in this case, that's okay. Uh, like I always like to end the show, I always tell people to make sure they keep their hooks sharp and their lures in the water.